Welcome to Afriki Emotions. I'm Kelly Amuzu from Togo, and I'm here to engage us in the conversations that matter and that create a healing in our African cultures. My conversation today is with Diane, a mother of a nine-year-old girl who's from Ghana and who lives in Accra in Ghana. Hello, Diane. Welcome to Afriki Emotions. Hello, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for agreeing to have a conversation with us regarding the circumstances and the lessons that you've had to learn um, around your reality of being married in a very um, glamorous life and then all of a sudden finding yourself divorced with your little child and trying to rebuild your life. Thank you so much, Kelly, for having me. It's a yeah. pleasure to share with the world the stories around our lives and the yeah. reality we get hit with sometimes. Wonderful. Well, let's get right into it. So as I said a bit earlier, your story, Diane, was so interesting to me because you shared with me that you were married um, about a bit, a bit over nine years ago because your daughter is nine now. You were married um, to a very well-off uh, person and you, were, you had a very glamorous life filled with comfort um, and, and, and luxury, basically. And, but sadly, the relationship was an unhealthy one that eventually turned into a violent situation. And you then decided, okay, I, I have to leave this now. And your daughter was two at the time. Can you tell us a bit about those circumstances? Thank you so much, Kelly, for the question. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as you said earlier, we got married about 12 years ago. Okay. Well, I gave birth a little late, so um, we got married practically about 12 years ago to this gentleman who was working with a big firm in the United States of America. And like it was in our days, it was such a glamorous wedding with lots of best men trail and then you know, ladies of honor and all the glam, the pimp and all that came with it. But I think that um, about a year and a half into the marriage, I mean, ordinarily after the marriage, my husband went back to the U.S. and then came back mm -hmm. a little over a year. So after a year when he came back, I realized that things were not the same. Mm. Um, he had lots of bitterness piled up in his heart. I couldn't figure out what it was. And so he had lots of resentments and it sparked up on very little issues. So the very little things that you might not see it as an issue, he mm. picked on them easily, would mm. quarrel over them and would not listen to your side of the story. Mm. Apparently, while he was in the US, um, I don't know how he got to build up a trust issue, but instead of calling me sometimes to confirm on issues, he had a world of friends and family around him hmm. who were calling trailing me, trailing my car, and were reporting to him. Wow. And I thought that the very ordinary situation for a man and a wife was that, oh Diane, I had this what's what's the really what's really the issue on the ground? But he would keep that to himself and pick on it. Hmm. And when he, anytime he picked on it, it got you a base, like, really? You know this, and how long have you known this? And you're now asking me. And it generated into heated arguments and quarrels, mm -hmm. and we never knew peace. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's how it started off. Um, I remember that he bought me a car. Yeah. I had a driver. And on my blind side, when the driver dropped me at work, or I was schooling at the same time, or at school, he drove off and would also pick his girlfriend and they would be roaming. Oh. So I remember there was this day he called me. I was sleeping and he went like, Diane, what's your car parked at Aphrodisiac doing? Wow. Honest to goodness, I didn't know where Aphrodisiac was. <laughs> it was later down the lane. <laughs> later down the lane, wow. I realized that 
It, has, it was a club owned by one famous Ghanaian then, Confidence, mm. where people go there to drink, to smoke, and do all sort of things. It was later I discovered where it was. Apparently, after dropping me off, and I had instructed him to go park the car in my mom's mm-hmm. house, he also drove off with his girlfriend to go have fun. Wow. And I also remember that my brother told me a story of meeting him somewhere in Kaswa, which is like a two-hour drive from where I lived with hmm. a girl in his car. And asked, my brother trailed the car and then stopped him. I was like, mm-hmm. gentlemen, what are you doing in this hood? Did Diane send you to be here? Does she know her car is here? He was like, oh, big brother, I beg you. I had an emergency situation and I had to come to this area to fix it. Diana doesn't know. Kindly don't tell her. He was like, but that's that's so not right. You don't do that. Right. So um, fortunately, I was dealing with a dual personality person. Mm-hmm. With me, he looked faithful and all that, but apparently he was doing things behind me, so... You that mean your me your, oh, your driver, not not your husband, right? My driver. driver. Okay, exactly. yes. Okay, go on. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I also remember that there was this day, my ex-husband had come from the States and were driving. And then suddenly he stopped. That was a car he was actually using in the US, so he knew the car very well. Mm-hmm. He stopped and he was like, Diane, what happened to your driving mirror in there? And I'm like, that's the mirror I've been driving with. He said, no, this is not the mirror. Mm. So he turned and then we drove straight to the driver's house and he asked him, Michael, where is the driving mirror in the car? He goes, oh, I parked somewhere, got stolen and then I had to buy this one. Does Mm. Diana know about it? And I was like, no, I I didn't tell her. And I don't know how I got so damp. I didn't realize that was not the mirror I was driving with all that while. Mm. So this is how issues started off and he began having trust issues. It was so difficult to trust me over the people who were feeding him with the information and all that. So we kind of started off really rough like that. Really rough like that. Mm. And how yeah. did he, how did he get to how did it end up with a start like that? Eventually, at what point did you make the decision? Okay, I have to go. Okay. So, um, you know, when it started like that, it, he became very violent. So anytime mm. he asked me questions and ordinarily in the face of issues, I find I lose my words. So it yeah. becomes very difficult to stand up my ex-husband and tell him that, no, this is how I am usually cool. When mm. it comes like that, I'm like, I have to go back and kind of think through issues and give him appropriate answers. Mm. Because I was also dealing with a man who would pick on your words and formulate his own stories around it. So mm. it was very difficult to talk at the spell of the moment. Wow. So anytime it happened like that, he lost his temper, he would slap you, he would hit you, he would beat you. This was going on for so long. I couldn't come to terms with talking to anyone about it. I remember the first time we ever um, reported the issue to Dovsu. It was a neighbor who looked for my brother's number and then reported to my brother that your sister has been in this hell of a marriage. Wow. She's bitten almost every night. And if you don't come pick your sister away, you might come pick up a dead body. Oh, wow. So I remember that early morning, after I'd been bitten one night, my brother came right from Kumasi. I didn't even know he was coming. And Mm. that's like a four or five hour journey. He had come. And then he took me up to the police station. We lodged our first complaint. We had an initial separation. We Mm. went our ways. Families came in. We sat. We spoke about it. And then we came back together. But the issues couldn't be resolved like that. The right. issues built up and um, violence continued. Right. So for me, it was not a one-off thing to just get off the hook of the marriage. Right. Since he started becoming bitter, he started becoming very violent. I mean, a part of me started withdrawing from what we used to share. Yes. So it became bits of a wear and tear, and then eventually... I remember what happened and then we went our ways. Um, he, for some reason, he had issues with the landlord we, whose apartment we're living in. Mm. 
One day I came back from work uh, to meet up that day. We're quarreling, neighbors were hearing them screaming at each other, insulting each other, using foul words and all that. So from that moment, he told me that, you know what, Diane, you let this transaction. I don't have anything to do with this man anymore. Mm-hmm. And the man also served as a notice that after our rent expired, he was not going to renew the tenancy for us anymore. Mm-hmm. So the ordinary thing I expected my husband to do was for us to discuss the way forward as to where we were going to go next. But unknowing right. to me, he had a master plan. Hmm. I remember one time our best man asked me a question. I, I took lightly because I thought that, okay, he could do all that. He could get violent sometimes, but he would never be cruel as in leaving us alone like that. Mm-hmm. So my best man asked me one day that, Diane, just be careful that your husband doesn't run away and leave you and the kid here, knowing that the tenancy is expired. Right. I remember in my heart, I said to myself, no, he, that, that he won't do. A thing like that he wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. So I thought that there was a very unlikely situation he would leave us. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, one Sunday, I didn't go to church that morning. I had a call from home that my mom was not well and she was admitted at the local hospital around. Mm-hmm. And he opted to leave to church with a mm-hmm. little girl. So I prepared the little girl, packed their stuff and then left for church. Hello? Yes. Go ahead. You left for church. (laughs) Yeah. So they left for church and I also left to see my mom. Uh I went to see to her. I went back to my mom's home, made her food, went back to the hospital, saw that she was just home that day around 7 p.m. in the evening. And then I realized that uh, they, they were not home. So I thought to myself that, oh, it's their usual drive out. They were gone. And between my landlord's house and our house was a detached apartment. Okay. I was home watching television for a while and I realized it was getting late. So I went to my landlord's wife and I was like, oh, mama, have you seen um, Jojo and daddy around? It was like, mm-hmm. they just drove off five minutes and you came in. I'm oh. like, oh, okay. So I started calling his line. Kelly, I called like a thousand times. The line would wow. then go through. Wow. So I, I started getting alarmed. Now I went into his room. At that point, we're living in two rooms, two separate rooms. Uh I went into his room. His traveling bag was gone. His basic things he travels with were gone. Wow. Then the truth started hitting me that a guy had run. Wow. I started making calls. With your daughter? Because I had no notice at home, no, nothing to show where my daughter was. So I was very alarmed. So I started calling his family, one person after the other. This person says, oh, no, we don't know where he is. So one of her stepbrothers told me that, oh, you don't know? I said, I don't know what. Then he went like, oh, he traveled back to the U.S. Eh. I'm like, so where's where's my daughter? He says, okay, you can call your mom and your mom in law and ask. And lo and behold, a friend. (laughs) Diane, so so the man left, went to the U.S., and you, at this point, don't even know where your daughter is. I didn't know where my daughter was. Wow. Yeah. Where was she? So um, I called my mother-in-law and I heard her crying at the background, very little girl. And I'm like, oh, mama, my ex-husband left the baby with you, right? And was like, yeah, the little girl is here. Wow. So I drove straight home, picked the girl, and then we came back home. Wow. That's when reality started hitting us hard. Yes. So um, the landlord, true to his words, <laughs> told me the wow. next morning that, my dear, I can't have you in this house. In the first mm-hmm. place, it's such a disrespectful attitude of your husband to have left his wife and kid here without even informing me he was traveling. Wow. And two, I had served you guys notice to quit my apartment because your rent had ended. Hmm. And... Three, I couldn't take responsibility of anything that happened to you in this house because the gentleman didn't even tell me he was leaving. Wow. I said anything to beg him to give me a little time. He said, no, my husband is so disrespectful. He couldn't Mm. deal with him. So Kelly, like joke, the next morning, the man 
actually helped me to pack my things on the corridors of the house. Wow. We looked for a, a big cover, covered it. My daughter and I picked a few belongings and then we went away. Where we were going, we didn't know. Wow. Due to the kind of societal wedding I had and the class and the pimp and the glam, exactly. I was very shy to go back to my parents to tell them yes. that I was back to base, so frustrated. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Mm. Very and, frustrating. And I can see how that would have a toll on a woman, on a mother's self-esteem. How Very did, did that, all that affect your self-esteem? Wow. Uh, well, <laughs> that was no joke. Wow. Um, because thinking of high, how high I was and now coming so low, it was a struggle between myself. I mean, it was a constant struggle between myself each time. Yes, yes. I remember a few times because um, my colleagues and my mates knew that I was driving cars and changing mm. cars. Mm. And now I was back to base. Mm. I remember two scenarios so clearly that I had gone to pick my daughter from school and I was mm -hmm. from work. So I had my whole big bag I was carrying. She was sleeping. So I had her on my shoulder and I had picked her lunch bag and I had picked her school bag and her other belongings and were saddled with a lot. I had a lot on my shoulder, my arms, and I was standing by the roadside looking for a public means of transport. Wow. And I remember that severally a few of my friends would drive by. And each time I saw someone coming, I knew I would quickly push my eye off Aww. just so the person doesn't notice that it was me standing there stranded. Mm. So it was so frustrating. And then yeah. also the fact that I had to come back to my parents' house and yes. everybody in the hood was wondering that, why is this girl back home? And the yes. stories and the gossips that went around, that was not comfortable at all. I can imagine. I also remember that a few times he would come to my mom's house and cause drama, make noise over custody oh. of the child. So he would come back from the U.S. and... No, he was... He, it was actually shuffling between U.S. and Ghana. Right. Okay. So after yeah. he had left you guys at that apartment, he would still come back. Uh, this is, okay, now you're officially separated, I guess, and you're back at your parents' home. He would come when he's in town and would come cause drama at your parents' house. Yes. Yeah, so this is what he was doing anytime he was in town. Um, the, the regular tema setting is... There's a setting where you have community playgrounds. Mm -hmm. so sometimes mm -hmm. a little girl will join other neighbors' kids to play mm -hmm. in the hood. Mm -hmm. And because he knew the little girl played at a certain point, he would drive around and pick the little girl and off he goes without notice to anyone. And you and don't know? My ma <laughs> we don't know. And hey. my mom, who, had, who, who was so old, would be running around people's houses yeah, yeah. and looking for the girl, be going to police stations, and her pressure would keep shooting an eye on the other wow. hand, would be so angry and all that. Certain wow. times he drives in when he is in town and demands to go out with the kid. And a few times I would go like, oh, no, we have a date. We're going out. If you could be a little patient, you would have the little girl when we are back and... He wouldn't understand. He would cause drama, shout, scream. Neighbors would listen in, and it was so embarrassing. Wow. I so remember that I, I, I had a torn life then, so I couldn't face up with my reality at my mom's house. Mm -hmm. So I was jumping mm -hmm. from home to home. I have oh, wow. a brother and three other sisters, so I would spend a week here, and I will spend another week with another person, oh, wow. and then another week, so I was, like, everywhere, and it's affected my business, it's affected yeah. my work, but I couldn't face up with the frustrations I was hit yes. with. And I also remember oh. that several times I would walk around shabbily dressed. That's not like me, but right. just the frustration is so much that sometimes you see people you know and you are hiding. Right, you're, right. You're hiding because you're not yourself. So because really, you're feeling and you're feeling shame and all kinds of exactly. emotions because of this. Wow. Exactly. So amazing. I was really hard on my self-esteem, but wow. Thank you so much we, we, for sharing that. That is such. I'm so 
grateful that you are at a point now where you can talk about this and, and even share it openly with other people so that my hope here doing this show at Africa Emotions is that people hear different stories and see themselves in those stories and also recognize that they're not by themselves going through stuff in life and that also that there's a possibility to make it through, right? Through all of this. Sure. Because, you know, sure. now, um, if, if we can talk a bit about how you're doing now, how are you and your daughter doing now? This was about six, seven years ago. Now your daughter is nine. How is She's How nine. are things going now? Oh, Kelly, I can't thank God enough for how far he's brought us, really. Wow. Um, in the heat of the motions, graciously, I landed myself a good job. Yes. And so we could manage our finances very well. Yes. And uh, the regular me who loves to do business got myself into other businesses. So currently, we, we run businesses and we have a regular job. Wow. So we're doing very fine. Trust me, we're doing very fine financially. Wow. We're very stable. We're happy together. <laughs> We're yeah, really happy wow. together, making life happen for us, yeah. I'm so glad that you and your daughter are in a happier, healthier, safer space now, Diane. Thank you so much for sharing all this deep story with us that I'm sure is the story of so many other women and men in Africa. Uh, to close our conversation here, would you, would you tell us what are the three main lessons that you learned through this experience that you can share with our audience? Hey, thank you so much, Kelly, for the opportunity to share um, my great three lessons with the audience. I um, mean, all these things are uh, lent um, the first lesson I've learned is in Noel, Reverend Noel Jones's words that be strong. There's mm. so much strength in every woman. We're yes. not as weak as probably the world perceives us to be. And nothing just happens. So in all these, if we can pick our lives together and uh, find... Uh, Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, in all these, <laughs> sure. If we can, if we can put our lives together and pick the lessons from what we go through and focus, we can, we can make it happen for us. So the first yes. lesson is to be strong. The second lesson to keep focus and keep going. Find something yes. doing with ourselves as women. There's so much opportunity out there to explore. Even if it means selling or doing petty trading. Once you keep focus, life will fall in place with time. And the last lesson I've learned is to have sublime faith in God. Mm. Everything happens and everything really starts and ends with God. Once you keep this strong faith in God and come to a point where you realize that it's a burden you can no more carry, you put it at his feet and he directs your path. Amen. So these are the three great lessons I've learned through it all. Amen, and I'm Diane. Sure that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you so Kelly. much. Hey, if you've enjoyed this conversation, if you found yourself in this story, if you have thoughts, questions, or just comments, remember to go to my website, Amuzu. No, it's kellyamuzu.com. See, I almost said it in French. <laughs> remember, I'm from Togo. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Kelly, it's kellyamuzu.com. Okay, friends, go on there. Send me your comments, questions, thoughts, um, even your stories your testimonials and I will be so happy I'll try my best to read as many of you of, of your emails as I can during the live of the month this was African Emotions with our wonderful guest Diane from Ghana Diane thank you so much for having been with us Thank you so much, Kelly. It's been amazing <laughs> having a conversation with you. Yes. Well, everybody, you stay connected because you matter. Ciao, ciao. Wow. Ciao.